Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I'm going to be painting a miniature from the Fallout board game, the Wasteland Warfare board game. And this is one of the alien models that, uh, one of the alien races that you can come across in the Fallout 4 game and also in the board game as well. I believe they're called uh, Zetans or Zetans, uh, I'm not sure quite how to pronounce it so I'll leave that down to you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments if I get it right. If I don't, then I apologize profusely. However, we're gonna move on and we're gonna start straight away by painting the green skin. So I'm gonna start by using a US Olive Drab, which is one of my favorite greens. It's a really underrated green color. And this color really, really does sort of work as a brilliant sort of base color for greens. Then we're gonna look at doing the spacesuit. Now the spacesuit is pretty much in two different colors. One of them is gray, so I'm using a really nice mid-tone gray here in the Stonewall gray. And I'm just going to paint this across pretty much most of the spacesuit, leaving things like the boots, the gloves, and of course the uh, the, the sort of um, armored breathing apparatus that goes across the top and the back here as well. So I'm painting the legs and the arms mostly, um, just the areas where the, the the sort of jumpsuit part of the spacesuit will be. And I'm just using my, uh, my my sort of size one brush for this, just to to just kind of get the the first layers on, and then we'll build up from there a little later anyway. So just covering all of those parts, just trying to be as um, uh, trying to be as careful as possible not to get this onto any of the greens or any of the areas that we've already painted. And then we're just going to paint the uh, the the rest of the bits. So these sort of like. Um, uh, almost like straps and things like that and the helmet itself so the breathing apparatus um, these boots gloves all of these are going to be painted in red so I'm just using a nice base color of Vallejo red which is a really good base tone red um, and I'm trying to be careful on the straps as much as possible not to get the uh, the red on the gray because it will be quite difficult to get that back out later um, the reason why I've started with the gray is as you can see there are some areas especially across the chest piece where it is a little bit difficult to get the gray back in once the red is there. So just trying to be as careful as possible not to paint this red onto the gray, um, but then we can tidy up some of these bits because this is only the first stage anyway, so this is a really nice, easy way of building these colors. It was a little bit difficult um, trying to paint the reds just around those straps on the legs, uh, but as I say, just by taking your time, a little bit of patience, um, and you can get there quite nicely. I'm also painting, uh, like I say, this breathing apparatus on the backpack uh, kind of area. So I'm painting all of that the same color, just keeping this into like a kind of two-tone effect with the gray of the jumpsuit and the red of the, the gloves and the armor and things like that. Now from there, we're just gonna use a true metallic metal. So I'm using a uh, gun metal color here. And I'm just gonna place this on things like the belt buckle. Um, and I'm also going to place this on some of the uh, the more detailed areas um, on the, 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 the helmet and the metals and things like that. So we're just going to go across the shoulder pads. As I say, the belt buckle. Um, he also has, as I say, just a few detailed areas across this backpack. So as you can see, there's some raised points there. And of course, we're also going to paint this silver just across these tubes that are going around his belt as well. Again, just to give us a little bit of depth and a little bit of color change so that it's not all one color. I'm um, just breaking up those colors a little bit. Again, you don't have to be too careful at this stage because this is very much just the base colors. Uh, but you want to try and be as careful as possible because it limits the amount of work you've got to do with tidying up later as well. So just covering all of these little detailed points on his backpack here, as you can see. And also just doing a very, very, very gentle sort of edge uh, dry brush highlight just around the front side of this helmet. Although we've painted it red, I am going to just use a small amount of silver to create sort of a, a chipped worn look to the, uh, the front of this part of his armor. Now from there I'm just going to paint a couple of little bits in a black. So I'm just using um, like a tenebrous gray, which is one of my go-to colors at the moment from AK Interactive. You can also just use a flat black color if you prefer. And that's all I'm gonna do here is just paint the weapon. And I'm also gonna paint the inner parts of the backpack just here as well. 
there's also a very, very, very small uh, tube on either side of this armor point on the back as well. So I'm just filling these bits in with the black um, just to add a little bit more depth to them um, because these are almost like sort of either electrical tubes or breathing tubes or things like that. So I'm just covering those over with the same color. Now we're moving on to a dark blue gray and I'm just using this for the base. Now the cool thing with these Fallout models is the bases are pretty much already built for you. So you don't have to spend ages thinking about what kinds of bases you wanna make. They're pretty much already there. So that's all we're gonna do is just gonna make this a really quick and easy, but also really cool effect at base. So I'm just gonna put a base coat of a dark gray on here. Now, once all of that is dry, I'm going to cover the whole miniature in a black wash. Now, for this, I'm using a Vallejo Game Wash. So this is a dip-in formula. Um, you can use any kind of black wash you want. If you prefer, you can use something like Null Noil, or you can use um, an army paint, a sort of uh, dark wash, uh, dark tone, and things like that. Uh, but just for this painting video and for this particular model, I'm just using this one straightforward uh, black wash from Vallejo. And I'm gonna cover the whole miniature in this and then we'll build the colors back up just to show you quite how, how simply you can make this without mixing in too many different washes and too many different colors and how we can build this back up quite nicely. We're also going to cover the base in the same color. So with that wash, I'm just going to go and make sure that I'm painting this wash onto the base. Now, the cool thing with doing this is the base is really, really cool because it does have a lot of cracks and things like that in it. So it does make it look like cracked stone and things. So using a black wash will allow you to get the darker points into those cracks. Now, with this model being quite a small min miniature, I have a lot of people asking me what kind of brush I use. So for this particular one, I'm gonna use a detail brush. And my detail brush is a two slash zero brush, as I'm showing you here. And that's all I'm gonna do is go back to the original colors and then build these colors up. So just going back to painting the skin colors and by using that US olive drab, we're just gonna to start to build that color back up. And as you can see, using this really fine detail brush, because this model is quite small, we're actually just gonna pick out as many of the details as we can while trying to leave that black uh, wash, that shade, sort of sat in the recess point. So sat in the areas, um, to, to kind of pick out where the detail is. So that's going to be where the darker areas are. And then this, as this dries and progressively sort of dries down as we paint in, is going to be, again, kind of like that base coat. So as I normally say when I'm painting, you've got your base coat, then your wash, and then back up to your base color. Now from there then we will start to highlight and start to pick out some of the higher colors and build on these textures and build on the tones as well. But for the start, it's always good to go back and just paint that color back in and then we can go uh, a step further than each time. And as you can see, I'm being as careful as possible not to get the paint in those recess points. Now for the next stage, as I said, we're just gonna mix a little bit of these paints together. So I've mixed the US Olive Drab uh, from the Vallejo paint range in with an olive green from AK Interactive. And I've used this, um, I like to say 50-50 split. So pretty much that's all I've done is I've mixed one drop of each out of the dropper bottle. So that creates this into a 50-50 split. So this creates a half and half paint color. And what we're doing here is because we put in half and half instead of going straight up to the next step, you kind of create in that, that halfway midpoint that you can sort of build the colors back up. That way, as you're painting, it doesn't go too bright, too quick, and then make it a little bit off-putting. So we can go into those half stops as we paint in. So as you can see now, whereas I've used that halfway in between, now I'm just using that olive green on its own. And now I'm being a little bit more selective about where I'm painting. So I'm trying to paint now more onto the eyebrow areas, uh, more across sort of the forehead, the cheekbones especially, and the nose. Kind of painting where the light would catch on the model. Um, and kind of building that color and building those tones up as we go. It's always good as well to make sure that you thin your paints down with a small amount of water because by using that very small amount of water, um, it does give your paint more control, but it also allows those paints then to blend um, and dry down a lot more naturally so that you don't end up, as I say, with such a really, really bright color just sort of uh, splodged or dropped into an area on the model. It makes it look a little bit uh, awkward. So as I was saying about these half stops, my next half stop is gonna be a combination of that olive green and a golden olive as well. And both of these paints are from the AK Interactive range. 
And that's all I'm doing, as you can see. I'm just building those colors and building those tones up as we go. And I'm also not worried too much about using those brush strokes because that's adding a little bit of tone and, and texture into what I'm painting. And I'm trying to use the very, very tip of this brush, although this brush is a very, very fine detail brush, just to kind of dab and, and sketch and kind of be a little bit sort of rough around where I'm painting these highlights. And as these are coming across the cheekbones, as I say, the, the, the sort of eyebrows across the forehead, Head, this is really going to pick out a lot of the character on that model and it's really going to pick out a lot of the character um, and the detail to really show him off a little bit later. Now that I've done my half stop between the two I'm also then just going to go straight on to using that golden olive and this is going to be the final highlight that I'll use on the skin and then I'll give this a little bit of time to uh, properly sort of dry down and give itself a little bit of time to, to, to mix and blend together properly. And as you can see, I'm just being really, really, really selective here. So uh, where I'm painting the forehead now, I'm not painting the whole forehead. I'm just using little dabs and little sort of um, pinpoints of the, uh, the, the the very tip of the brush. And I'm just dabbing this and just tapping this very, very lightly just to kind of create a little bit of texture and things with the way that the paint is, is moving on to the miniature as well and adding a little bit more to the depth out of it. With that, that's the skin done. So that's all of the green skin. We're just gonna leave him there. And as you can see, he looks really, really cool now. There's a lot of character on that. There's a lot of character on that face and a lot of character through the miniature. So what we're gonna do is stick him with this very fine detail brush. We're gonna go back and do the same thing across the rest of the model. Now we're starting with his jumpsuit again. So we're gonna go back to that stonewall gray. And we're just gonna slowly build this up. And it's almost a little bit kind of like painted by numbers at this stage because we're going back to using that base color that we started with, but we're being really selective about where we paint in this. So what we're gonna try and do is paint the creases and paint the folds but without painting into those creases. So we just leave in the darker points, as you can see where the shade has, has, has dried. We leave in those as the darker areas. And then we're painting the areas where the folds are becoming lighter, as you can see just across the trouser areas and things like that. And the reason why I say it's a little bit like painting by numbers at this stage is because by using that wash um, and seeing where the paint has dried into the recess points, it kind of gives you an indication um, on a step-by-step -step way of where to paint the next area so where to paint the next sort of uh, base coat because you can kind of see where um, those folds are which allows you then to build the color onto the folds without kind of having to make it up too much it's kind of already there for you and that's a great way to paint because then it's kind of giving you the um, almost like I say a little step-by-step -step, almost giving you that ability to sort of paint it as the model is 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 built so once we've finished by using uh, the stonewall gray i'm then going to use a highlighted gray and i'm going to do the same thing but i'm going to be again like we did with the skin a little bit more selective of where we paint in this so as you can see i'm trying to be a little bit more conscious of where i'm putting this and this now is a sky gray and this is a nice little bit of a highlighted color on top of that uh, stonewall gray and this will create a nice little bit of a highlight and a, and a nice way of like sort of offsetting um, or, or catching your eye really. So as you're looking at the model, the model's gonna have this really cool light little highlight to it as well on top of that um, jumpsuit. That means that the jumpsuit isn't gonna be just basically one color. It's gonna give you a really nice sort of tone and texture through it. And that's kind of what we're looking for. Easy ways of painting, really, really cool ways of looking miniatures. And that's kind of, that's kind of what this channel is all about, is just trying to paint some really cool looking miniatures, but without making it too difficult, you know, trying to do it so that it's nice and simple, but they still look great when you play in the game. And I hope that that sort of translates through uh, on the channel as well. So as you can see, I'm just trying to be as selective as possible, I'm trying to think of where the light would catch on this miniature, I'm trying to catch, uh, trying to think of where the light would catch onto his jumpsuit and being as careful as possible with that very, very thin detailed brush, just to try to pick out the folds as much as I possibly can. Now with this as well, you can decide sort of how far you want to go in terms of highlighting as well. So I've stuck with paint in this as a gray jumpsuit, but as you may have seen in some of my previous videos, gray is a really good base color and a really good starting block to build up to white as well. So you could use this and keep on building up to a whiter color and make it a little bit more brighter 
uh, a little bit more vibrant and things like that but that's completely up to you so for me I'm using this as a gray color and we're going to keep him in a gray uh, suit because most of the pictures that I've looked at for reference show him in a gray spacesuit so that's kind of what I'm doing now from there we're going to do the same thing with the red so we're just going to use the red that we used as that base color uh, for all of the uh, the sort of space armor and those straps and things like that and we're just going to build that back up and again just trying to be as careful as possible um, it's all the more important now to be as careful as possible now especially on those straps because we've spent the time now building the gray uh, the last thing you want to do is get the red onto the gray so we're going to spend a bit of time just making sure that we're as careful as possible when placing this red onto the model because we really don't want this to run into all the hard work that we've done so it's very very much worth using um, like a magnifier or I, I paint with magnifying glasses you may occasionally in videos see a little bit of the glasses just getting quite close into the, the, the camera lens and that's just me getting close to the model while I'm painting um, so it's worth it's worth using something like that just to make sure that you can get as close and as much detail as possible. Now I'm just making sure that I'm painting the red around all of this uh, sort of helmet apparatus, this kind of breathing thing, this sort of um, spacesuit uh, like metal points all around him. But again, I'm trying to be as careful as possible not to paint this onto the silver, as you can see, just going around the details. And I'm also using those brush strokes as well, just to paint as I'm painting the gloves, kind of creating my own illusion of creases and things as well. Now, combining those two, uh, th those two companies, those two painting companies together and two different colors, I'm going to be mixing the normal red that I've used in with a uh, AK Interactive Dirty Red. Now, this is a nice vibrant red. So by using this as a mixture, this is going to boost that base color with a really nice sort of vibrant uh, tinge to it so this is going to get a little bit more of a color contrast out of it um, so yeah this is a really cool mixture of paints because this is going to give um, a really nice pop to that red and it's also going to make it stand out quite nicely um, I don't know why they call it dirty red because it is a really nice uh, bright color it actually uh, makes the the reds really stand out on this particular model um, so yeah it's a great little combination to use and again, I'm trying to be as careful as possible, I'm trying to be more selective this time, especially with things like the gloves. So as I said, using the brush strokes to create the illusion of folds uh, just around where his wrist is holding on to his uh, blaster pistol and things like that. And all of these things come with practice as well. So when I say we're just creating the illusion, we're using the brush strokes and things like that, the more you get used to sort of sketching out and painting with your brush strokes, the kind of uh, more used to making these kinds of little textures and things you become. It's always good to paint um, as many miniatures as possible, even if you just got like sort of bits in your bits box or um, you know empty bits of sprue and things like that, where there's just like one thing left. It's always good to paint these little things up and practice and just use them for doing little um, little tests and little tester types of, of colors and, and things like that. And the more you practice, the better you become. So it's always worth just practicing on everything you can. It doesn't always have to be a completed model for a game. Sometimes it can be just a little bit, just to kind of get a, a grip and a feel for how different colors work and, and things like that. So as I had done with the skin, after doing the uh, sort of halfway stop, the 50-50 split, we're just going to go straight on and use the dirty red on its own. And again, being more selective now, we're thinking where, where we want the sort of highlight to be. So just painting on certain parts of where the highlight is going to be and using the tip of that brush again, just to build that color up and build that vibrancy up as we go. Um, it's always good to try to use the, the, the finest point of the brush when you're painting like this because it, not only does it give you control but it also gives you the ability to sort of um, pick and choose where that paint is going to go so when you're painting on your model if you weren't um, if you're not painting sort of using just the very tip you might put a splodge on where like a big splodge of paint or a big big drop of paint somewhere where you think oh no i've got to clean that back up and things so it's always good to just use the very very tip and sketch things out you know it's kind of like as you would draw you kind of sketch things out and build it up and build the layers up it's the same kind of thing with the paint so just going back to that gunmetal color now as well just using the true metallic uh, color and I'm just picking out some of the details now on his suit so as you can see I'm just picking up the the silver ring on the front and then these two little sort of dots just here either side of his his apparatus his belt buckle as well and of course 
the silvers that we had painted on the back as well. So just being careful to pick those up as much as I possibly can. And what I'm just trying to be as careful as possible when painting these because again now that we've spent a bit of time building that red up last thing we want to do is make a mistake now i'm also going to add a small amount of silver just across uh, the shoulder pads but also onto the backpack as well where those two little sort of um, cylinders are in the backpack just kind of build the silver just around uh, the back there also as well just again to create a little bit of depth have something else to look at on the backpack so this not just one flat black area to look at now sticking with the silver as well one of the uh sort of easier things to do is we've painted the weapon black so we're just going to lightly dry brush the weapon silver so that it looks like the weapon itself is 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 like a, a a black painted weapon but it's also been worn down and some of the paint has chipped off and you can see some of the details and things like that this is a really really easy easy way of uh, picking up those details and making the gun look cool um, but also just trying to use a smaller dry brush just to be a little bit more controlled because we don't get silver onto the red of the gloves. And we're also going to do a little bit of dry brush in just across the base and we're going to dry brush the base with a lighter blue so we're going to use a blue grey pale for this one which is the next step up and the next highlight up on top of the base colour that we had used originally. And as you can see, using a little bit more of a controlled dry brush and a little bit more of a controlled brush, we're just trying to pick out those details as much as we can, trying to be careful not to get this onto the model itself. Now, one of the cool things with Fallout is the fact that everything is uh, full of like radiation and all these different things like that. So we're going to paint like a really radiated base here. And I'm going to go to using a livery or livery gray, uh, green. I'm not sure whether it's livery or livery. or But anyway, it's a really, really bright, vibrant sort of... Um, like a like a, a sort of um, radiation kind of green so I've mixed this with quite a bit of water as you could see this this paint is moving and flowing quite quickly as you can see and I'm just using my brush to try to allow this to sort of fall into the cracks and this is going to be the base sort of color that we use to build that radiation style up so as you could see I'm just painting one side of the base here letting it seep into those cracks and letting this uh, this green sort of do its stuff because this green is really really bright and vibrant it's really going to stand out against that gray base that we've painted so this is going to catch quite a bit of the eye as well now moving on to try something really different, really unique and something brand new onto the channel. We're going to use a pigment glow and this is a glow in the dark pigment. And this is from Green Stuff World and this is a really, really cool different effect and a really cool pigment and, and style to use. And pretty much this is a pigment powder. So in the bottle it looks like a green powder. And now when you place that onto your palette, that's all you need to do is mix water with it. Now, depending on the more water you mix with it, the more um, manipulative it becomes, the more you can use this to manipulate around the base and to put this into the cracks where the green is. If you don't use too much water, it does turn out a little bit like a paste. So it depends on how you want to use this. And it's got a lot of different functions and a lot of different ways that you can use it. But for me, I'm watering this down a bit and then this sink into the cracks on the base. And this is going to be a really, really cool glow in the dark effect something that is really worth spending a bit of time on playing about with and working especially for these kinds of uh, fallout miniatures where everything's really sort of um, radiated and there's so much radiation in the wasteland it's a really 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 cool effect something that i would highly recommend that you guys try um, and once you've done that stage that's all you've got to do then for the final stage just to tie it all together is to just paint around the base now for me i always paint my models in black um, but that doesn't mean that you have to you can paint them any color that you like i know there's people out there that like to paint them in browns and all these different things so that's completely up to you and there you go there's our completed zetan 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 however you say it this is our completed model anyway and all in all i'm quite happy with how certain parts of this have turned out i really like the green i love the character the texture the depth and the detail that we've got out of that little face and i also like the contrast of the red onto the green as well it creates a really unique looking little miniature and it's been a really fun one to paint as well i really do hope that you've enjoyed this painting video my friends and i look forward to seeing you on the next one until then take care